With two quick losses to start the series against Boston, the Raptors find themselves in somewhat familiar territory. With their backs against the wall in the past, Toronto has always been able to respond and find a way back. The key piece to their ability to rebound quickly has been their knack for fixing mistakes and making timely and effective adjustments. We'll take a look at a few things that have stood out and how they might be able to make the tweaks. Even though they finished Game 1 with 14 and Game 2 with 12 total turnovers, sometimes the actual amount is far less important than the type and the timing of them. Raptors had 6 turnovers in the first quarter of Game 1 and it allowed Boston to build their lead early and the Raptors were not able to recover and make up the deficit. The majority of them were unforced errors coming from the steady veterans in very uncharacteristic situations. Dead ball turnovers hurt in that they're still lost possessions but Siakam's offensive foul was even more costly because it was the second of his three fouls in the first quarter and it resulted in a long stretch on the bench. Where turnovers become a real problem is when they're live, meaning the opponent now has a huge advantage going the other way. In this case, Tatum has a wide open breakaway finish. Finally, the most costly mistake came on the out of bounds by Siakam at the end of game two. Navigating the tight space in the corners of an NBA court continues to pose problems for players. Clean footwork without a back step is crucial to be able to catch and put the ball on the floor all while staying in bounds. Certainly not an easy way to lose an opportunity to tie the game up, but the Raptors will need to value the ball, especially during key stretches of games to be able to give themselves a fighting chance. In order for Toronto to find their way back into the series, Pascal Siakam will need to step up his performance. He is averaging 15 points per game on only 34% from the field. It's pretty clear that Boston has a specific scheme to defend him and it has been very effective thus far. Siakam has faced numerous defenders as Boston is quick to put a range of guys to disrupt his rhythm. With the size of Tatum and Brown and the physicality of Smart, they've been able to mostly play him one on one. He's been able to get numerous touches in good low post position but has struggled to convert against the active and rangy Celtics defenders. It's no secret that Siakam is not a great finisher to his left hand, so Boston is continuously working to push him in that direction. In the post, he's a much better finisher turning to his left shoulder and using his right hand, and you can tell the Celtics are working hard to take that away and force him to more inefficient right shoulder finishes. He is not comfortable with his left hand, so he looks to use his right, which forces him off balance and exposes the ball to the defender as he is not using his body as an added separator. When he does turn to the right shoulder, he also prefers to shoot a mini fade rather than get to the rim. This now becomes a much lower percentage shot and Boston has been able to anticipate and send help quickly to contest and make it an even more difficult shot attempt. While he has not been able to solve the puzzle and get his scoring game going, Siakam continues to draw the attention of multiple defenders and this presents an opportunity to create shots for teammates. He had 6 assists in game 2 and will need to continue kicking the ball out in order to loosen up the defense and not only get his teammates clean looks but also to free himself up. During regular season play, Toronto was number 1 in the NBA in 3 point defense keeping teams to below 34% from beyond the arc. Through two games so far, Boston is shooting 42% from three-point range on 16 makes per game. They have done this by punishing Toronto's shrinking defense, moving the ball quickly, and putting pressure on the closeouts. Raptors plug up holes in crowd driving lanes by showing bodies on dribble drives. As soon as Kemba Walker puts the ball on the floor inside the arc, Van Vliet is stunning to the ball to discourage the attack but the quick kickout leaves a space brown open. Boston knows how Toronto's defense is built and as a result are able to use this against them by driving to pass as opposed to score. With a probing attack, Walker is able to get Lowry and Siakam to both pinch in and open up the corner three. Spacing the shooter, even if only slightly, makes the closeout angle and distance much more difficult to navigate for the defense. The Raptors have been able to get out to shooters in the past because they were able to disrupt passers and buy themselves time. Because they have opened up their angles and made quick decisions, 
the Celtics are moving the ball quickly and getting their shooters open with a very low contest level. It's not realistic to expect the Raptors to completely scrap what has been a key component to an elite defense all season. However, being more selective when they shrink to the ball could pay dividends. On this possession, Siakam completely commits to Tice's drive, leaving Smart wide open. Lowry slightly fakes at the ball, but not enough to discourage the shot. In a situation like this, shading more towards the shooter and forcing Tice to make a play at the basket is a better percentage play for the Raptors. In terms of points per possession, open spot up threes beat out contested twos inside. The other way Toronto can make an adjustment is being more selective in when they commit in relation to the level of the drive. Knowing that Boston is probing and attacking the pass, the defenders off the ball can use that to their advantage and get back to their matchup quicker. Even though Tatum has a speed advantage on Ibaka, just one pound dribble draws Van Vliet all the way across the midline to take away his space. On the kickout, Powell would have the rotation out to Smart, however the Celtics dive Brown and force Powell to go with him, leaving Smart wide open. Making tweaks to when and against who they send defenders at will be crucial in the coming games. The Celtics know their game plan, is Toronto able to make the adjustments to take that advantage away. Toronto's bigs play off the pick and roll to protect the paint and take away rim finishes. Gasol drops the furthest, while Ibaka and in limited minutes Boucher are up higher but still below the level of the screen. Although they have taken away rim finishes for the guards, they have put themselves into two-on-one situations with a rolling big getting behind the defense. Tatum was able to really punish the coverage in game two by attacking with patience and poise. He would consistently have clear separation coming off the screen, put the on-ball defender on his back, and then utilize the space in front of him to get to his patented jumper off the bounce. Facing elite shooters off the dribble like Tatum and Walker makes it difficult for the drop coverage to take away their rhythm. The on-ball defender has to be engaged and evade the screen in order to stay attached and have a rear view contest to force a tough shot, but so far the Raptors have not been able to accomplish that. Switching with the bigs in limited situations has also not been very successful as Tatum and Walker just have too much variety in their game. The Raptors may have to consider playing smaller lineups with Siakam at the 5 which makes them more switchable and also allows them to be more aggressive and attack the ball to take it out of the hands of the scorers. Coach Nurse has never been hesitant to make changes and adjustments to give his team the best chance at winning. With his team down two games to none, he will have to continue to find ways to disrupt the flow of the Celtics and stimulate it for his own team. There are a number of options available, it'll be interesting to see which way they decide to go. Thanks for joining us, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified when new videos are released. For access to full analysis and all the content, check out our website at edubasketball.com. We'll see you next time.